Chemical fingerprints are a unique pattern of wavelengths that each element on the periodic table and each molecule emits slash absorbs. So we're looking at a set of wavelengths and every element on the periodic table or each molecule has its own unique pattern of these wavelengths. Notice I said emits slash absorbs. So let's take a look at an example of this. So here we're looking at one element on the periodic table and we see emission versus absorption. So notice that we have a pattern. We see a red, a teal green, a blue, and a violet. And then in the absorption, we just see the absence of those colors. But they're at the exact same wavelengths and the pattern is exactly the same. So you have a big space between these two, and then you have a medium space between these two, and then a small space between these two. So they have, these set of wavelengths are at the exact same numbers, whether they occur in emission or absorption. So let's go take a look at some elements on the periodic table, and we're only looking in emission in these chemical fingerprints. So let's look at hydrogen. Hydrogen, if you take hydrogen and fill it a glass tube of just hydrogen and then you electrify that gas, you will see hydrogen emits four colors if you look through a diffraction grating. It also emits two other colors, but they're in the ultraviolet band, so they're ultraviolet colors. We're only going to focus on the visual wavelength band in this example. Now, hydrogen emits this particular color of red, so we call it hydrogen alpha. Now, it also emits this teal color, which is called hydrogen beta. And if you look carefully, you see this blue line, that's an emission that's called hydrogen gamma, and this violet line, which is called hydrogen delta. In helium, we would not call it hydrogen, we would call these lines HE for helium, and we would give them different letters. This one might be helium alpha, that would helium, be helium beta, that would be helium gamma, that would be helium delta, etc. But we're only going to focus on the hydrogen one right now in comparison with the helium one. When we look at the helium one, we see that this helium line would occur at that wavelength. And that helium line only applies to helium. Notice hydrogen doesn't have it. We could also look at sodium. Notice sodium doesn't have that hydrogen line. What about this orange line, this reddish orange color? Well, same thing, hydrogen alpha doesn't have it, hydrogen doesn't have it, and neither does sodium. They don't have it. So each element on the periodic table has its own unique set of colors and they have their own pattern uh, that the colors are in. It'll always be red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, but some of the elements on the periodic table won't have all the colors. For example, sodium. Sodium only has two yellow lines in emission. Sodium doesn't emit red, orange, green, blue, indigo, or violet. It only emits yellow. So you would see only yellow for sodium in emission. Look at iron. Iron has a lot of lines in the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. But none of these lines overlap with sodium, helium, or hydrogen, or any other line on the periodic table. There, think of these emission as an infinite Crayola crayon box and each element on the periodic table has its own set of crayons from the Crayola crayon box. So if you have a big Crayola crayon box that's completely full with colors and you reached in and pulled out color H alpha, H beta, H gamma, and H delta, then you set it aside. Then you go look at helium. You pull out these five colors for helium and set those crayons aside. And you look at sodium, you pull out the two yellow colors for sodium, set them aside. Pull out all the colors that you see for iron and set them aside. Eventually, you'll get a box that has no or few Crayola crayons in it because they all apply to different elements or molecules on the periodic table. So this is what we mean by chemical fingerprints, a unique pattern of wavelengths that each element on the periodic table and each molecule either emits or absorbs at those wavelengths.